Welcome to our read along with Dr. Pell in the book Discrete Perspectives in Mathematics. This is subsection 4.4.10. We're going to practice adding points in a discrete elliptic curve visually this time instead of algebraically. Okay, so if we want to do things visually, we're going to have to be thinking about slopes a little bit visually. Um, what kind of slopes can we have? Well, we can have zero bar, one bar, two bar, three bar, four bar, five bar, six bar. Um, and how do we visualize something in like, in like three bar? I mean, there's lots of different things in three bar. There's like three and seven or three and 10. Sorry. If you add a seven to three, it's good 10. So you have three and 10, and 17. And, um, what kind of slope do you want to use? And can you use just one of them? The answer is you, you can just use one of them as long as you re as you repeat your graph enough times. Um, kind of like this. See how we took our elliptic curve and we just kind of repeat it. So it's just, this is elliptic curve here and we just kind of repeat it over and over again um, in different directions every seven uh, places. So that's what we're going to be looking at. And the slopes we're going to use, we're just going to restrict ourselves to some nice slopes, which are representatives of those fibers. Negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. That's a complete set of representatives for zero bar, one bar, two bar, three bar, four bar, five bar, and six bar. Um, so that's what we're going to be using as we go along. So notice that at each point, now we've labeled these points, and different instances of these points are labeled the same. Um, and notice that each point we have a tick mark shown. That tick mark just represents, and the slope of it just represents um, the value of dy dx that we would get implicit differentiation um, for the elliptic curve equation if we were to, um, in this elliptic curve equation, if we were to um, uh, solve for dy dx and then plug in the point x, y. That, that represents that point. And then we take, we find that, and then we just output um, one of these guys, the guys that is in the same uh, mod or the same bar as, uh, as what we just obtained in that calculation process. So why do we do that? That's so we can think about tangency, lines that are tangent that have a point. Like if you want to add a point to itself, you always need to use the tangent line at that point. So that'll kind of help us to think about double multiplicities a little bit. Now, notice also that I've drawn lines that go through this point G um, of slopes, negative one, negative two, um, negative three, undefined slope even, um, like trying to divide by zero, even in a mod doesn't work and we'll represent that by an undefined slope, a zero, bar, uh, slope, a zero slope, uh, one slope, um, two and three. So if we want to add G plus something, um, why don't we try adding like G plus C perhaps? If you add G plus C, you go to the third intersection point, which is U, and look at its vertical partner, which is two. We're done. We just added G plus C was two. That was a lot faster visually. Um, in this setup, then, um, then we would have been able to do it otherwise. Um, so we know G plus C is two. Go to the third intersection point and drop to its vertical partner as two. And just remember on uh, double multiplicities here as we move along. Um, so G plus, uh, G plus C is two, and notice that's what we have here. In fact, if we looked back at, this comp at all this algebra computation, that's all we just showed. We just showed G plus C was two, which is exactly what all that algebra did up there. Um, so we didn't have to do the algebra if we have a nice picture to follow here. All right, let's maybe try another one. Um, let's see. Uh, like, let's see. What if we did, um, let's pick two points. Maybe we do G and um, and T. All right. So G plus T. Now, what does this, uh, the slope of T really look like? Let's zoom in a little bit here. 
just kind of look at that. Um, T looks like the slope of T actually looks like it lines up really well with that line, um, which means it's probably double counted. In fact, especially we can we can notice that since there's no other points occurring on this line. So if we want to add G plus T, the third intersection point is T itself because it's double counted. They go to its vertical partner, which is C. So that means that G plus T is C. It's vertical. So go to the third intersection, then vertical partner. That's how we add. All right, what if we wanted to add something like G plus, um, this is the point at infinity. Notice that it lies on every single vertical line. Okay, and we've labeled it right here with an O. So we take that, um, so G plus O, let's see, what's the third intersection point? Well, it's T. All right, now go to T's vertical partner, G. Hey, right back to G, right? It's the identity. If you wanna add G plus T together, let's see how that goes. Go to the, so G plus T, go to the third intersection point, and then go to the vertical partner of that third intersection point. Now we're gonna assume that the point in infinity is its own vertical partner. So it's just O itself. So G plus T is O, meaning that G and T are additive inverses of each other. Vertical partners are always additive inverses. So using this type of technique, and let's zoom out again, using this same this type of technique, um, we can actually go through and add G to everything in here. And I've designed this little picture here to be a puzzle. All right, so you have a message here. And then if you add G to each one of these things in turn, um, and you look at the what the symbols are, this is a, so the result is it like unscram or unscrambles this, this or message or rearranges it. So you see a G O, which you could say is go, and then O U T like out to see it, go out to see it. Now, this is just an example of an elliptic curve puzzle. I, um, and uh, I have a book on Amazon, which um, has, has a lot of these puzzles in it. Um, but if you want to do, um, get something for free, also on my website, I have a place where you can actually design, make your own puzzles. All you have to do is just type in a message. You want to be encrypted in a puzzle and it'll do it for you. And then you'll have something to print out and use um, uh, as much as you want. Also, there's some generic ones that just um, pop out as well that you can that you can do as do too. So this concludes this little subsection. Um, thank you so much for watching.